welcome to the Post Sunday app. We have gone on location here to our new facility. Yeah. And uh, we have come off just a wonderful night last night, our building dedication. Um, Daniel, what stood out to you last night at our dedication service? It's hard to pick just one thing. Yep. Uh, there, were, there were so many moments that uh, we were talking about this uh, last night. and Just all, all the different the, the people who were involved, just seeing the emotion on people's faces. Mm -hmm. You and I talked about that. Mm -hmm. Seeing how... Um, seen how many people have been involved in this ministry and and just seeing it all come together it's still you know we're, we're in the building we're doing a post sunday app from the building we did a dedication ceremony last night it still doesn't totally feel still new. real to me yeah yeah so it, it's exciting to mm -hmm. see what god's going to do through this you know i was on stage at one point could that have been maybe your favorite moment it, um by chance was it like whenever you were messing up and saying that no <laughs> No, uh, yeah, that was actually it was. What, you would be on stage with one of my favorite parts, Kirk, Mike, and, and I. I say this seriously because each person that was on the stage had had a, a different leadership role, and so it's kind of mm -hmm. cool to see how there was no one person who really mm -hmm. built this building, but it yeah. was it was a team effort. And when you think of all the people in the audience uh, or in the chairs there that have prayed, and yeah. given. Uh, just a real sense of unity. Yeah, it was fun. It was, it was very fun. fun. So, well, great. Um, now, now the fun begins. The other, the next phase of the fun begins, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's use this building. Yeah, for for our purpose. Um, so, what what makes you excited? What, what how do you see this building being used? What are some of the exciting things that could happen here? Well, last night, as we prayed the the prayers of dedication for this building, our, our prayer was that God would would use it in, in for His glory, just in general. But also, we had some specific ideas about how we wanted God to use it for his glory. We, we know that God has an eternal purpose for the people in this community. And so we want God to use this building, we talked about this, a finite resource for eternal purposes. Mm -hmm. We want him to, to use this building to minister to people in the community. And so our hope is that even people who aren't a part of our church would be able to come maybe to some of our conferences, would come to some of our, our training sessions, mm -hmm. we'd be able to strengthen other churches. Other churches may uh, have a need to, to use this facility, and we talk about like-minded churches using uh, this room for weddings or, or whatever, things like that. And so we're hoping that the community looks to this building as, as a building that doesn't just belong to Bethany Community Church, but belongs to them, mm -hmm. that they are able to use. And then we pray that God would use it for his eternal purposes for the people in our church. And so we have this vision of people in these classrooms taking classes, uh, doing doing life together, um, you know, do counseling, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and uh, being equipped to go outside the walls of this building and do ministry in their in their neighborhoods and their lives and families. And then we talked about just the, the global purposes God may have for this building, that God would use this building to advance his gospel throughout the world, that people who don't currently know him would become worshipers of him as a yeah. result of some of the ministries that take place within this building. So yeah. it's, you know, we showed those pictures at the beginning from seven years ago. And now you think, man, that seven years went, it went fast, but a lot happened mm -hmm. in seven years. And, and what is God going to do over the next seven years? It's pretty exciting to think yeah. about. Yeah. How about you? Well, I, I walked in the doors uh, at one point with uh, a mom and, and three elementary school kids. Mm. And um, she said, my kids are so excited to get in this building and see what it looks like. Yeah. And I don't know, there's just something for me that I thought, how cool is that, that uh, these three, three boys um, are excited about how this building um, will affect their lives. Mm. You know, they knew that this, this space is going to be something that will have significant impact on them and mm -hmm. so whether it's you know awana other other children's ministries things that their parents are going mm -hmm. to they're coming along you know think about you know they're, they're going to grow up with memories of of how this building and things that happen in here uh encourage their spiritual life you know so that was kind of neat would you say they felt a sense of ownership like this is my church building as well i think so yeah. i think so yeah that this, this is the place where they're going to feel at home that's neat that's the hope that's cool. the hope so um, well, obviously, God was very gracious to us with this building, showed his mercy. You mm -hmm. talked about God's mercy. How's we that did. for a segue? Yeah. Uh, Awkward, your but good. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm no, trying. I mean, it's <laughs> no. way better than what I had. 
<laughs> so I was Psalm, just going to go straight into it. Yeah. Psalm 28 was the, the passage that you, you preached on yesterday, and we'll be starting on the Pentateuch starting next Sunday. So excited for that. Yeah. Get started. Um, but you talked about um, who receives mercy. Mm. Um, let, let me ask you a question that I think many people at some point in their walk with God kind of wonder about is just the relationship between God's mercy in the Old Testament and God's mercy in the New Testament. Mm. Um, what does that look like? How, how is, is the cross, in a sense, in play mm. as mercy is talked about in the Old Testament? Or is that a separate kind of mercy that's different than the mercy in the Old Testament? Well, as we go through the Pentateuch, as we go through the first five books of the Bible, we're going to see that, that the cross comes into play immediately. As soon as sin enters the picture, hmm. the cross enters the picture. And here in Psalm 28, you see very clearly, uh, I think, the, the gospel message. It's very clear that if, if we want to be judged on the basis of our works, we're going to fail, and we're going to be, we're going to be found wanting, and we're going to be carried off with the wicked, is, is how he describes it here. Hmm. If we want to be judged and, and found righteous, we're going to have to have a righteousness that doesn't come from ourselves. And so the psalmist points to uh, the Lord's righteousness, the Lord being, uh, being praised because he's heard his pleas for mercy. And then he, he talks about the Lord being the saving, saving refuge of his anointed. I think ultimately, of course, that refers to the Messiah. So absolutely, the gospel has always been the basis on which God shows mercy to his people. Hmm. Okay. So, and that's going to really come through clearly as we go through the Pentateuch. Yeah. yeah. I wrote down a statement you said after your third point, that God exalts his name by giving deliverance. Mm -hmm. I thought, how, how great is that to give us perspective on our own lives, yeah. that it's all for his glory? Yeah, so how can we be confident that we're going to receive God's mercy? Well, the, every person who cries out to God for mercy on the basis of, God's work through His Son, Jesus Christ. So a person who cries out to mercy for God, trusting in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. is, is, exalt, is exalting God. They're saying, God, you're the one who can deliver me. And, and God is going to exalt His name. And so the person who trusts in God will not be disappointed mm -hmm. because God's going to exalt His name. So we can be confident as we're united in Christ that, that the Lord is, as the psalmist says, the Lord is going to, to, to save His anointed. He's going to save those who are united in Christ as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. I'm really looking forward to getting into the Pentateuch more and, and seeing, you know, even our, our church logo. We, have, we don't talk about our logo a lot yeah. on, on Post Sunday app, but seeing that, that cross in between the pages, yeah. you know, influencing the Old Testament writers, influencing mm -hmm. the New Testament writers. It'd be neat to see that come yeah. through your sermon series. Yeah, so, you know, I've had a lot of weeks to work on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you would think I would. The bar's high. Really? You set it high. You think I'd have like a title that I'd say right now? This would be a really opportunity. Yeah, the title of this or our series for the Pentateuch because I have a couple ideas, but nothing that I can say uh, on camera. So you'd well, think I'd be a little further ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we, I'm sure we, we've not been disappointed, Daniel, in the past. <laughs> Well, God's, God's word, grace, right? yeah, God's word is going to be yeah. good. So we can always say, "What a beautiful passage!" Right, right? and it is going to be. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, thanks, Daniel, and uh, thanks for tuning in to the post Sunday app, post Sunday app today. We hope you have a great rest of your day.